How is everybody today? Let's begin because we've got a lot to cover. Today, we are going to look at the problem of air pollution. And to understand air pollution, I want to look at one of the particularly harmful gases that causes it. So, that's where we'll start. And then we'll move on to discuss trees. Yes, that's right, trees. And we'll look at how trees are a great low technology solution to air pollution. Okay, so we have these two areas to cover. Let's start by looking at air pollution in urban areas, that is, cities. What we see in urban areas is that air pollution can be especially intense because the human population in cities is so big. When we look at population statistics for an urban area worldwide, these numbers are interesting. The world population is over 6 billion in 2005. And of this 6 billion, almost 50% live in cities. Another way to say that is more than 3 billion people, 3 billion, live in cities. Why am I telling you these numbers? Let me explain why. It is important to understand these urban population statistics because when we look at the problems caused by air pollution in urban areas, we can see that in cities a huge number of people are affected by pollution. And we also see that it is the same huge number of people that cause the pollution as well. So cities are key places to look at the causes and effects of air pollution. So let's move now to look at some of the specific causes of air pollution. In order to give us an idea of how air pollution works, I want to explain the impact of one pollutant on air quality. The pollutant is a gas, a gas called sulfur dioxide. How many of you have heard of this? The chemical symbol for this is SO2. Sulfur dioxide is a mix of sulfur, the chemical symbol is S, and oxygen molecules. The chemical symbol is O2. The sulfur we are talking about is present in fuel. What I mean by fuel is material that is burnt to supply heat or power, like oil and coal. Okay, let's look at how SO2 is formed then. Let me put a slide up for you to look at while I explain the process. Okay? Here it is. This shows four steps or so of the process. First, we have a fuel that contains sulfur and it is burned. The sulfur is released into the air you can see it coming from these factories here. Next, the sulfur then mixes with oxygen in the air. This becomes SO2, sulfur dioxide. So that is how it is formed. But let's look at what happens next. The SO2 then rises into the air at this point, it mixes with water in the clouds. The mix forms a substance called sulfuric acid. And now, the sulfuric acid interacts with other gases in the air to form something called a sulfate. The fourth step shows that sulfuric acid then falls with the rest of the water in the clouds as something called acid rain. You've probably heard of this. This acid rain is extremely dangerous to the environment, land, and water. So that's the process of how SO2 is formed and becomes acid rain. 
Let me spell out the problems sulfur dioxide can cause for both people and the environment. People exposed to SO2, many of them living in cities, have a difficulty with things like this. Difficulty with breathing, watering eyes, and burning nose and throat. For some, these effects are temporary. But in other cases, SO2 can actually cause permanent damage. Now, let's look at the effects on the environment. Here are some examples. Sulfur dioxide in acid rain damages forests and growing things and even changes the soil. In other words, the ground the plants grow in. It also increases the acid level in water. By water, I mean oceans and uh, lakes and streams. It makes them so acidic that fish and other living creatures cannot live in them. I think I've painted a general picture of how serious air pollution is. You have a pretty good idea of how terribly it affects every living thing. So, let's turn our attention to what's being done about this problem. Let's turn our focus to one unique solution. Let's talk about trees. Trees provide both environmental services and economic benefits. What does this mean? It means that trees actually help save money. I want to talk now about how trees help in and around densely populated urban areas. Let me start by defining an important term, and that is urban forests. The term urban forest means uh, planting and uh, maintaining individual trees and small forests in and around urban areas. Uh, for example, an urban forest can be tree-lined streets, trees in schoolyards, trees in downtown parks, and trees along the highways. You get the picture. So let me explain what these trees do to reduce pollution. First, trees absorb polluting gases through their leaves. They take in pollutants and break them down so that they are less harmful. You can think of trees working kind of a, like a sponge for various forms of pollution. So trees help reduce existing pollution. Trees are also helpful in preventing pollution from occurring Trees actually help cities stay cooler by reducing high temperatures in general. How does this work? Trees, as you know, provide valuable shade. And shade is good because once the air is cooler, there is less of a need for using air conditioners. Some urban forest organizations claim that just three, only three, well-placed trees around a home can lower air conditioning bills by up to 50 percent. This is amazing. Lowering home electricity bills is just part of the story of how trees help. Power plants that produce electricity are one of the biggest sources of SO2. Urban forestry is an international effort that you can see in cities all over the world. Let me give you a few examples. Beijing, China, Dublin, Ireland, and Mexico City, to name just a few, all have significant urban forestry programs. I'm going to stop here today, but I hope to leave you with an understanding of one polluting gas, sulfur dioxide, and the advantages of trees and the urban forest.